Hey guys, what's up? Uh, my name's Fallon Headings. I'm a physical therapist and a track and field coach. Um, for those who have been following me, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about what's been going on. Um, if you don't care about that, fast forward a little bit to the good stuff of this video. Um, so, I've been absent for a little while just because I've been studying for a really big board exam for, um, for my physical therapy career. But I wanted to jump back on and start giving some more um, instructions in how to properly train for track and field. So here I am, I'm in, yes, our unfinished basement. So if you have any comments, go ahead. Um, but guess what, life's not perfect. So here is our unfinished basement. And today I'm gonna go over um, a few tips on for, for new lifters. I know as a track and field athlete, I didn't really start lifting until I actually got to college, which I would have rathered somebody kind of teach me in high school a little bit about what's going on. So at least I knew the basics of the movements before I got to college. And I was gaining a little bit of strength because strength is extremely important when it comes to getting faster and getting better at your event. So um, I'm gonna go over the squat today. Uh, the squat is, I think, one of the most versatile movements to get stronger for you core and legs. Um, Cause it's gonna work your quads, it's gonna work your hamstrings, it's gonna work your glutes, it's gonna work your core as long as you keep proper form. Um, so we're working a lot of different muscles that are very important for any track and field athlete. So if you're completely brand new to lifting, I want you to start with body weight. I want you to start with body weight only because I want you to master the form of the squat. So I'm gonna get up and I'm gonna show you a little bit about what's going on with just body weight form. Then we'll add a dumbbell to make it a goblet squat, which again is gonna add a little bit of resistance for you, but I want you to make sure you're keeping that proper form before you move over to the barbell, okay? Um, there's tons of different variations of squats. I'm really only gonna go over a few different um, squatting forms. So remember, there's a ton of varieties that you'll see out there. There's benefits of doing a front squat versus a back squat, and I'll get into those in later videos because um, I'm gonna do a big lifting series um, in the coming weeks. So, okay, so here's what we're gonna do is, to start for squatting, I like to always teach with a box, so doing a box squat. So find something that when you go to sit down, you're about parallel to, your thighs are parallel to the ground below you. Here is, I'm parallel. I could probably go down a little bit more because when I come down and tap, I'm a little bit above parallel. That's a lot of times how I teach the movements. Um, so body weight squat, what you want? I'm gonna have you keep your chest up, eyes looking forward. Don't necessarily, I know some people say look up. I don't like you to look up because it cranks your neck back and puts your neck in a bad position. So keep your neck neutral. Just keep your eyes kind of looking up towards the top half of your room. And you're just going to feet are shoulder width apart, hip width apart. Again, that's kind of comfort for your hips and how they feel when you get down to the depth of your squat. So you're gonna come on down, tap that surface that you're on and then come back up. You're not fully sitting on your surface, okay? Other things to look up, look for when you go to squat. You want this chest not to dip forward. If you're dipping forward too much, that's gonna make, once you put a barbell on your back, extremely hard. What you should see is these shoulders kind of dropping straight down and coming back up. Next. You wanna make sure these hips don't kind of do anything funky with their movement. So as they're coming down, back staying straight till you tap and coming back down. At the very bottom of my squat, I can start to feel kind of what we call a butt wink. And that's just gonna put a little bit of extra pressure on the low back when you get into some really heavy loads. If you're not getting into super heavy loads, it's debatable how much that um, matters. But keep an eye on it. Um, so those are pretty much the basics of the squat, is making sure shoulders are kind of dropping straight down, you're not having anything funky going on with your back, and that's about it, okay? So now let's say you've mastered that. Let's add a dumbbell. So I'm gonna grab this 
dumbbell right here, and I'm just gonna hold it in front of me, just kind of gripping the um, top of it, keeping it nice and close to my body. Um, and then I'm, again, I'm coming down, tapping, and coming back up, okay? Um, again, you're kind of wanna making sure, now that we've added this resistance, you're not dipping forward, your shoulders are still coming straight down and straight back up. So that's what we call a goblet squat. You can work up to a variety of um, dumbbell ranges with that. The only limitation with that is your arms will start to only be able to hold a certain amount um, compared to your back squat. So then say you've mastered the goblet squat, you're getting up to an easy 35, 40 pounds. Now your barbell is 45 pounds. Um, <clears throat> So you can go ahead and move over to the barbell. Um, and then obviously slowly progressing to add weight from there. So here I'm gonna put the barbell on my back. Always make sure it's even. Like I will make sure that my thumbs are about the same um, distance on the bar. So again, I'm using this box just to make sure I'm getting to the right depth. I'm keeping the right form, all of that. Again, you're looking for the shoulders to kind of come straight down or even looking at the bar path. Watching the bar come straight down and straight back up. You don't want to kind of do anything funky with your movements and coming back up because that's going to put a lot of extra stress on the back and possibly lead to an injury at some point in time. So obviously as you master this, you can start to add weight to kind of get your um, so out of the box squat too. So say you've mastered the box squat, you can always go now full depth, coming back up and back down, um, or back, yeah. Um, you know what I mean. So those are, I guess, the basics with your squat. Um, there's a lot of different variations you can do with a squat, including you could do front squat, which is going to hammer the quads a little bit more. Um, you can play with the uh, where the barbell is on your back. They um, will say that is either a low bar or a high bar. Um, and that just changes a little bit of where the load is coming down. As you watch that barbell come down and as you squat and come back up, you'll see that that resistance is gonna play either in front of your center of mass or behind your center of mass. Um, and then it's going to put extra stress on say your quads, your anterior musculature, or your posterior musculature, which would be your hamstrings, glutes, that sort of thing. Um, so that's kind of the basics of squatting. Uh, we'll get into a little bit more progressions in an upcoming video. Um, so look for that and then we'll get into a bunch of other lifts like your deadlift, which I think is extremely important for track and field athletes. I like Olympic lifting, but that's something I would teach later in an athlete's career and not necessarily new to the sport. And yeah, so if you have any questions, drop them below and have a good day training.